Hey everyone, it's uh, Joe and Isaiah here from the Automator, and today we're talking with Chunji. Chunji has this really cool class he's built in AutoHotKey. I mean, he's been on a lot of our Friday calls here and there, and he, he wrote this class that's based off of a couple JavaScript libraries, and it's really cool. It allows you to manipulate objects and arrays and strings, so stick around to see how he uses it, and it's really kind of learning about declarative programming. So this is for you upper level people, like a lot of people, I think it's still good to watch, don't get me wrong, but... Um, you're definitely going to learn some really advanced stuff in this video. So, Yeah, uh, I, I would say even if you do not know the terminology for, you know, declarative or whatever, but you will understand as soon as we, uh, as soon as he shows some examples, you might get the value of it right away because it is, as maybe you said, Chenji, like kind of like shortcuts in programming, which which in the end, when we, when we if you have to do some of the stuff that he's going to show, you would have to do several steps in his with his library you just call one function or method and it would do it for you so it is a little bit easier to understand uh, the value that once we see some examples now Chenji, a quick question how long have you been working on this project already um why well, I, I think uh i estimated about 100 hours um i had to learn a lot of very deep level auto hotkey things to make certain <laughs> stuff work. Um, but the first commit was about three years ago and it's not like I'm spending, you know, hundreds of hours on it every day. It's, you know, I'll mess with one method for an right. hour or so one day and it just added up over time. Yes. Um, but it's very useful for me. Um, for, I think of it like shortcuts when, you know, I might have an array or part of a string I want to find a certain part of it, um, it I could just jump in there. I don't have to like make a variable and this variable keeps track of where the start is and this is the end and they all work together. It's just, I say what I want and I get it. Exactly, perfect. Perfectly said, that's that's basically what declarative uh, programming is. I say what I want and I get it, right? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> it was one of the things where when I was learning Python for a bit, I was so jealous of the slicing and stuff you could oh. do in Python. And when I saw this, I'm like, oh, wow, okay, I, I'm definitely going to look at this class. Exactly. Yeah, so we definitely have a slice method here um, that's really useful for both arrays and strings, I believe. Uh, I'd have to check it out. But anyways, um, why don't I show you a little slideshow I've, I've got put together to uh, help keep me on track for yeah. time. Are you guys seeing this okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so big A.autohotkey. Um, it's an, a modern immutable utility library for auto hotkey. A lot of a lot of meaning packed into that little <laughs> sentence, but immutable is another programming paradigm where instead of changing your variable all the time, you just make a new version so you can use that old object um, if you need it later. But uh, we'll worry about that later. Anyways. Okay, so one thing I really am excited about is when I started this project, I knew there was going to be a lot of methods. Because I was designing it off of an existing uh, class um, in, in JavaScript, I knew that there's you know, close to 200 different methods. So I knew I was going to need some kind of build script to keep it all organized because there's no way I was going to be able to um, handle like uh, <laughs> a huge you know, 3,000 line uh, file. So how it works is all the, can you guys see my mouse moving around? Yes. Yeah. All the methods have their own file. And one cool thing is each file also has all the, the tests and we'll come back to those tests. So the build script goes through all of them, just a simple, you know, auto hotkey uh, for file loop and it pulls them all together into the library. Now the next, the really cool thing that's so awesome is the tests. In those tests, um, you know, I have another class that goes through and it tests the output. So you have like, here, I'll show, why don't I show an example? Uh, so right here, we have a, a method called join. This is for, if you have an array, you can't message box it. If you tried to message box this kind of array, it wouldn't work because message box only accepts strings. So join is a really cool method that just turns them into a string. Um, mm -hmm. As we can see, like down here, instead of a one, two, three, I got an ABC. And there's a, a, a can, um, like the character that 
goes in the middle of them. And then here's the expected output. So all of that goes into this test. And I said I was excited about the test, but what I'm really excited about is these tests right here, they actually go into the documentation. Right. So my the tests are, or I mean, the examples on the documentation are always, they're never out of date because they're being tested every single time this is run. That's really cool. Here's some other tests that are also done, but not on the documentation page. All right. Whoops. I go back one. So like I said, um, all the documentation all the documentation is updated by this build script and then many of the tests are you know put right into the documentation right so this, so this means that this means two things for those who do not program this way because again uh, most of the times when we create little scripts we don't need to do these kind of things mm -hmm. but for libraries like this one that you have 170 methods sometimes you might change one method and it might break something else so when you do the tests, you make changes to your library, but if something mess is messed up, you will know right away before actually uh, throwing the lab library out there, and you can fix it before even reaching the, the consumers or developers that are gonna use this library, right? Right, how many times have you had a script, you're like, oh, this works perfect, you, you maybe run it once or twice on your computer, you send it to your buddy and he's like, hey, yeah, I get an error message here. It doesn't even, nothing, I don't see a GUI, nothing. So tests are a good way to make sure it runs in all sorts of different circumstances. That's correct. Okay, so let's see an example. Um, Joe, I know a lot of your audience, they don't use classes on a super regular basis, but when you want to use them, typically you will create a variable um, of that yeah. class. Enough, now yeah. you can use the the uh, class name itself, but just to follow um, auto hotkey and JavaScript norms, I went ahead and did it this way, where we have the variable name is a, um, you know, inspired by the name of the class, and we say it's a instance of the big A class. So this uh, example is about a, a method called difference. And difference, what it does is it's kind of like array subtraction. You have one array and you have another way, array and you subtract the, the uh, smaller one from the bigger one. So in this example, we have a list of Ford models, um, Ford being Ford Motor Company. We've got a Bronco, a hybrid of some sort, Crown Victoria, etc. And then we have, also have a smaller um, array called popular Fords, which is, we've just got the Bronco, Mustang, and F-150 as like the popular models. So what Big 8 does for you is instead of writing loops to go through every yeah. single one of yeah. these and go through every single one of these and find the difference, all we do is we say Big A, difference, these two, and we get it. So instead of looping through, like if we were programming a robot, instead of looping through every single finger and say, close that finger, close that finger, that one, that one, that one, we'd just say, hey, that hand right there, close all those fingers. So there that's how are. I kind of think of it. Yeah. Uh, that, that's how I understand declarative programming, um, where you, you don't get stuck in all the nitty gritty of loops and, oh, I gotta do this and I'll keep, keep track, track of that very much. Exactly, <laughs> keeping track I'd of- just say, hey, I just say, hey, I just say, I want all the not as popular cars and I subtract from all of them, I, the popular ones. I do like to think of when I'm being declarative, I give someone the finger. So that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and in general, down there, you see the uh, output, which would be all the ones that are not. Yeah. Bronco, so Mustang, so if, you go, if you go through here, you'll, you'll not find this, any of these three. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and look at another example. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to go through every single method. There's about 174 methods, I think wow. I counted. That's nuts. So yeah. uh, just to recap, uh, big A dot auto hotkey is for declarative programming. You get what you want simpler and easier for the programmer. You get immutable programming. Uh, we're not going to go into that too much. It's just a kind of a little style. Um, I guess one example is I was writing a program 
And usually I would have one object and by the end of the script, it's totally different from how it started. Yes. So if I ever wanted, oh, you know what? I really want to change the options. I have to do it near the top. With immutable programming style, it's uh, a little more flexible in that, you know, your object at the top and the bottom are uh, a little more unjoined. Think of it as that the history of that variable is preserved. You right. can always go back to the beginning because it's never changed. Now, whenever you do these kind of things, uh, if you, for example, did a difference and replaced the variable, yeah, you would lose the original information. Yeah. But so the way how you're you, doing it, yeah, yeah, is just giving you an answer and you're just storing it in a different location. In this case, not as popular, but yeah. Yeah, so we won't go too far into that. Yeah. Uh, the other thing it gives you is type checking. So sometimes you have a method or a function, it only works with strings and you accidentally put an array in there one time. Big A has a lot of different type checking that will throw an error. Now this is good and bad, you know, it's bad in that if you make a mistake, you might get an error that stops the entire program. Uh, the good part is, you know, you're very much more likely to find that problem before you, you know, hit compile or send it off to your users. Actually, it is, I do not see the downside to that because it is worse if the error is not catched and your program is still running, and then you think everything is running fine, but then your data is messed up and you haven't figured it out yet. You will yeah. figure it out later on down the road. And that, that that's where I would say- Yeah, or it might take an hour long. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been in situations where I'm debugging for an hour and I finally realize, oh, I'm not getting what I was expecting because I gave it a number instead of a string. Yes, so, so that's what it, that, that, that's, I, I do not see the downside of that one. <laughs> uh, Oops, accidentally jumped a slide. So what it does not do is it does not make AutoHotKey itself run faster. All these, you know, some of these extra steps, your program will run a few milliseconds slower. Um, I see this as a good thing because my time as a human, I find it more valuable than, you know, the two seconds the computer might save. Yeah. But yeah. I, I see some confusion where people are like, oh, it's this big, amazing thing. It makes auto hockey run faster, right? Well, no, not exactly. Not exactly. It, it's, it's designed to help the programmer run faster in their mind, but yeah. the computer is going to have to pick up the slack. Well, I, I was going to say earlier, too, is you're not claiming that, like, hey, which is what you're saying now. It, it's not that it makes it faster, but it's very reliable and has been proven. You're still doing a lot of the same stuff that I you could do it anyways. Myself, yes. But yeah. it's a proven, you know, source where now I can just call that class or method and not have to worry that I made a little goof up in my comparison of the arrays or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. So um, here's uh, another here's another example. And I've, the reason I've blacked these out is because so you can kind of think, oh, how would I do that by hand? So here we have two different APIs. Maybe a, there's a, a stock API one, it gives you the price, and then another stock API that gives you some other information. information yeah. And uh, we might, in our app, we might want to say, hey, I don't want to remember the, which one does what. I just want to put them all into one object. And so I have you know, NASA's stock as one object. So probably the way you would do this in regular vanilla auto hotkey is take the bigger one or one of them, make a clone of it, and then loop through the other one, merge each property onto the, uh, the other object that you want. But in big A, all we do is we say, merge these two guys together. Awesome. That's it, exactly. And the funny thing about this, in going back to one of the points that you made, uh, Joe, is that, for example, today, in my program, I wrote a loop that did this, and it worked. Tomorrow, in another program, I'm going to write the loop again, and I make a mistake. And now it's not working correctly. So in one program, it works fine, and the other one. But in this case, every time I call a marriage, it's going to do the same thing all, over and over again. So I, I'm not going to be uh, having this issue. Oh, today I was tired, and I, wrong, I, I made the wrong, you know. Someone the other day on Facebook, they, someone was asking for help on a regular expression. And someone gave them a very basic thing and they're like, this will fix it. I'm like, that'll fix that instance. You know, it'll work there, but it may not work 
because he gave one line of code. You know, I'm like, right. so many things that might break on. But right. yeah, yeah, good point is this. So okay, so we have another we have another method here. One one, I still use Auto Hockey version one, and one thing you might come up against often is the random function. You have to make your random number before you can use it. So you'll pretty much always have little, you know, floating variables that well, it was just holding that random number for you know, so I could use it on the next line, but. Um, so here's an example of sample size. Sample, it'll just grab a random element from your array. Um, we also have a random method, but anyways, uh, this one's really nice because this will only choose, uh, in, in, the, in my example here, I say pick two coordinates, but not the same one twice. In, auto hot, in vanilla auto hotkey, that would be somewhat difficult because we'll have to random one, we'll have to random another one, but make sure it's not in our original set. So it's, it's bootstrapping with and without replacement. <laughs> right. Yep, right. So, Isaiah, I forgot. I totally, until he just said this, I'm like, I forgot you mentioned you actually work in market research also, right? So it was like, oh, hey. Oh, this is oh right. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So, um, obviously, if you were to write this in vanilla auto key, we, you would need random. You would need at least two loops, one loop to you know, do it the number of times you want and another loop to make sure you haven't picked that one already. Mm -hmm. And here, we just have one line. Uh, it would give you how many you want. In this yeah, case, would be two. When we're making a variable. It'll, you know, this outputs an array. Um, we call the class, call the method name. On what? The coordinates, which is this. How many do we want? Two of them. And then it uh, would just give you... The two two random ones. ones. The way this act, this the way this function uh, method actually works is, it'll just shuffle the entire thing and then choose how many you wanted. Oh, he wanted two. Grab the first two. Okay. So that that's how I made it oh, faster it. in my mind. <laughs> Instead of grab one, make sure it hasn't been picked before. Grab another one, make sure it hasn't been picked before. No, but that makes sense actually. I think we're coming up here on some of the final examples. Um, Joe, I don't know if your audience uses tables very much, but I kind of think the, of them as like Excel uh, sheets in AutoHotKey. And another way to describe them is just an array of objects. So here we have an array starting and inside the array or inside each element of the array is another object. In this case, it's a, a student named Zeus and his class his score, whether or not he's completed. Cool. And here we're asking to find all the names of students with finished classes. Now, obviously you could do this with plain auto hotkey, loop through all the students. If completed is true, then put it- in Add it into a variable, right? Yeah. But let's see what we got here. But, but the, the, the interesting Oops. thing, the interesting thing about this is that you're acting on objects. That's what makes it a little bit more complex because if you did that on a string, you'd use the if in string, whatever it is, that's it. But if it isn't an object, you have to look through the object to get whatever you need. So it makes it a little bit more complex as well. So, so um, here we've got kind of a complex thing. Um, I might have to pop open the filter documents to explain this fully. But I don't, uh, Big A also has these function methods that we'll get to here shortly. But it basically just tries to match any of these objects. Does it have a property of completed? Mm -hmm. Now the completed property is a, a Boolean true. So that's um, how that is accomplished. I'll show you the documents in a moment. Uh, and, but there's also some shortcuts in Big A where instead of writing out all that, we can just write, oh, we want the completed property is it set to true and i'll sh i'll come back to this example but uh it really shows how compact you can get your code where you you just say i want all the completed students now quick question on this one is there a way to do the negative of that like for example not completed there is a way 
I will. I think that's on the next example. Okay, awesome. So here, here it is. We have the same the same students, and we'll find all the the students that are ninety plus. Uh, for your example, it could be anything. It could be completed is not true, or uh, score is less than ninety. So same thing here. We're going to use the same method, but this time we pass in a function. Um, and that function is this fn a plus students, and it, it gets a value. And the value is going to just be one of these entire objects. So when we, the value comes in, we check the score. Anything that returns true goes into our a students output. I forgot to comment this line, but here's the output. Oh. No, so, so, so what you're saying is that I could now pass a function as a parameter to, you know, when you're filtering. Mm -hmm. which means that um, now this function is going to be called for each of them for us to go ahead and filter. So you can you can manually select how you're going to filter the data. Right. Is that what you're saying? Okay. For your for your question you you would type like if completed is not hmm. equal to true. No, yeah, for example, or, or you could just do false. exclamation part right, value right. dot completed because the value you're checking is boolean. Right, right. But what I'm saying is what I'm kind of getting at is that, and this is how it's called, this is a callback function. A callback function in this case, what it means is that instead of the filter method doing the work, you can actually pass a function that will do the work and you decide how you're going to do the work, how you're going to do the filtering is what I'm understanding. Right. About. I have a slide about function objects. We'll get to right. here in a moment. Okay. Um, the only other thing I want to mention on this, we also have a, a map map method here and all mm -hmm. that does is it it goes through because uh this one was returning students so they'll still have all of this information we only want the name sorry my mouse is a little wacky and so that's what this line does it, it just converts it name. into just the names okay right so anyways let's talk about function objects i've got a little plain vanilla auto hotkey example here where we make a variable called functor it gets a function called string length. Obviously, you know what string length does. It returns the uh, the length of the string as a number. Sorry, my mouse is sending me all over the place. And then when we call that functor on a string like hello, obviously the answer would be five, or the return would be five. Okay, so this is getting to the more nuanced area of the class. Um, obviously you don't have to use every single feature, but this is more this is getting into those function objects which some areas of the class use. And, and here what we have is a we're, we're creating a user. It's just an object and we use this matches pro, uh, method and we're checking if it matches this property age 24 and we when we call that functor on our user we get true because these both match it matches. so you could also take this functor and use it with our like students database they would all be there would be no return because nobody there's there was no age in that example it was just scores and their names right however uh here's a new table called user db i believe this is the last example it's got a bunch of different users but two of them are named frederick so we want to find a user named frederick who's born on this date with plain auto hotkey obviously you could loop through you could check if uh, the name is frederick and if the birth date is this but in um, big a dot auto hotkey we we've got we, this actually gets simpler, but we use a we use that a matches to create a functor that it you know the match must be must match these and it's a partial match. You'll notice that the ID is not mentioned, um, the age is also not mentioned, and this find method. What this does is it just returns the first one that matches. Mm -hmm. Now the big A also has a shortcut method where if you don't want to, you know, memorize all this matches stuff, it uh, 
has a lot here. Why don't I open the documents to that exact one? Oh. Documents is not taking me to where I want to go. Let me try again. Okay, now it's working. And here we can see there's uh, three different shortcuts. There's a matches iter a T shorthand. There's a matches property and a property shortcut. Um, matches would be really good for if you have you know multiple things about the the users in this case that you want to match. Um, matches property. Uh, it takes a different format, but pretty much the same thing. And property is even shorter where it's really good for checking like Booleans. This is actually um, really, really handy by the way, because sometimes you, so, so this second example where it says matches property, that I could say active false. So that means active equals false, right? So you, I could have um, used you, you, that for you the other example. You, I don't think you can put expressions in there, but yes, you could. You could do active as or uh, whatever. Right. So instead of instead of instead of using the other yeah, example, instead of in a which I had, function, yeah. Right. Exactly. Instead of having a function that does that, I could just simply pass an array with the property and the value, and it would do that for me, and I don't have to create my own function for it. Exactly. This that's that's a very good thing. I didn't even think of that at the time. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's basically a good because at this point. Um, the last example just says active is only if it is true, I would assume, right? Right. Right. Okay. Uh, the, sec um, the one above is just, I would tell it what it might be. Yeah. So here we have a, a very similar thing. And uh, Isaiah was saying, we don't have to, you know, do all Use this the funk, fun, yeah, this function. funk stuff. Th that that's in case that I... Let's just go straight, right, right, in, right in my case, I would use that over the one if I want to do some complex stuff and I want to do it myself because I know what I'm trying to do. I would create right. my own function to do it. But at this point, at the bottom, I could use whatever you came up with. And it is if, if it is for a simple search, I would just use that. And I think that's the most common one that I would use. Most of the time, I would do yeah. that. There are some very specific situations in, in which I would create my own callback yeah, function. If you wanted to know, if you if you need to do some manipulation of the value, right, exactly. like find all the even aged people. For example, you yeah. have to use this kind of thing. Right, exactly. Because you haven't implemented it, unless you have a method that does that, right? But if you don't have a method, then I create my own and I could just pass it to this thing and I just say, hey, give me the even ones, for example. That looks good. That is actually very good. So that's the end of my presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, I encourage you to try the class for you know a day or two, see if it helps you. For me, I was I was working in JavaScript and I could do things like you know search this entire array and find it, whereas in AutoHawk you have to loop through it and oh find remember this one and go over here. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, man, I really wish I could. I really wish I could bring this to over to AutoHawk where I'm you know having more fun. And so I thought, okay, you know what? I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and actually, how was the process for you? Did you how, how did you find this um, this project of uh, doing something that you have done before in another language? Saying, "Hey, I don't have key, doesn't have it. Let me try it." How did you find this process of starting something that is not there? Um, the first step is always the hardest, um, but I did have to expand my knowledge a lot because you know. Before I only really knew about functions, I had to learn classes and all this other stuff. Oh wow! So you didn't even uh, you you hadn't even uh, worked with classes before. Um, I think in a very minute way, you know, like uh, you know, very right. starter. Right. Starter okay. stuff. Okay, wow, that's amazing. And this is the interesting thing. And and Joe, we were discussing this with the I don't know if it was in the free call and or with the members that we said, hey, learning is a painful process, right? But the, the harder it is, it means that you're doing something good for yourself because you're learning stuff. So I would have assumed that when you started up doing this process of you know learning classes, learning how to do tests, learning how to add new up those things. It was a little bit difficult, but in the end, you were able to actually 
gain a lot of knowledge that now is going to help you outside of this particular project, I would assume, right? Well, I was going to say also, it, it's it's really, uh, it's one of the best things you can do. And we've talked to a lot of people like Maestrieth used Auto Hockey Studio as a way to learn how to program, right? Like, yes. And so here you dove really deep and said, you know, I really would like to have this. And you use that as an opportunity to also learn more about auto hotkey and programming so yeah it's very cool i do have a question have you um so i i noticed regarding for example your testing uh environment did you create it that yourself or are you using a suite for that um so i looked at the landscape uh for auto hotkey test unit testing um mm -hmm. there are some really good ones but they are somewhat heavy in that you have to write a lot of code just to perform one test. I just wanted to write one line and get it done. So mm -hmm. I I actually wrote two testing libraries. Um, I had one, it was called unit testing and it that worked for most of the time. Um, and then I wanted to add more features or do something a little radically different. So I created another one, which it uses now, which is called expect.autohotkey. Right. Um, and I highly recommend that. Um, obviously it's performing 700, uh, yeah, like 700 tests every time I work on this. It's really fast. Um, it's really easy to write tests for, but there, there are other options out there that are probably more powerful. This is in some ways a little bit simpler. Right. Sometimes it just, it, you just need one little detail, you know, you don't need the whole full control of, you know, the testing units and stuff, right? You right. just need to know whether it's working or not, and that's right. it. I just, you know, I pass in an array. I want to make sure I get this exact string back. Some of the other testing libraries were somewhat, you know, a lot of lines to accomplish that. Right. Um, I, I do use YUnit, which is uh, one that was created by another person, U Uberi is his name. Um, and that, that's the reason why I was actually surprised because I, I noticed that you were not using that. I've seen a lot of people using the other one and I was like, oh, that's interesting. You're, you're using a different library. So you create it yourself. Like that's for me. Right. Well, I knew, I think I knew three things. I knew there was going to be a lot of methods. I knew mm -hmm. I was going to need tests and I knew I, I knew I was not going to update the documentation myself by hand. Right. Yeah. I, I definitely see so that. I think one. that's the three things that the build script accomplishes. Right, perfect. Um, now, regarding the library itself, how how did you um, so when you say that it is, it introduces overhead? How are you checking for that? Like, how are you um, deciding? Yeah, how are you measuring the fact that it is a little bit slower, or are you just saying it because you understand that it will do it? Well, I, I understand it is a slightly slower. I do have a unfinished class called performance measurement um which was it's, it's not done but ideally it would you know measure how fast each 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 method goes and track that across different versions because big a is on version 0 0.54 or something like that so i was interested to see you know if version 001 started here are we going slower or faster or what? Right. Yeah, definitely. I just um, find it ironic that your thing on measuring isn't done. So you <laughs> that's a, that's uh, interesting. I yeah, theoretically yeah. understand that it's slower, but <laughs> only as far as, you know, check that the user input a string or not. Right. Okay. No worries. Now, um, basically, this is a, a library that is target uh, it, the, the, the idea is to work on arrays mostly or objects but you mentioned that we could work on strings as well can you show me what what you mean by that sure let me see if i can share my screen here um i wonder this let me let me show the github actually tell me if you see this or not So I have the all the different methods organized yes. into folders. Obviously, we have a lot of arrays, and collection is kind of another word for uh, like tables. Nice. Uh, I don't think there's any date methods, but actually, no, there I, I, is yeah, one. Yeah, there was one. Yeah, there, were, there was one. I saw it. 
so there's there's function here's a really this was a really challenging method to make where it flips your arguments the other way it's Ooh, crazy wow. um, yeah what happens if you have three or four it just it just flips flips the order of them uh yeah it, oh wow that's i haven't really used it in any production thing but you know sometimes people want the error first in a lot of javascript libraries so that this helps accomplish that mm -hmm. um anyways that that's kind of an advanced topic yeah but let me answer the original question. So we got language. Uh, that's just like it, a lot of type checking stuff. Math, numbers, objects, sequences, strings, and utility. So we'll jump back to the documentation. And let's just go down to string methods. Yeah, a little bit down now. Uh, here's a really handy one, random. So you, oh, you can get your random number immediately. You don't need a variable to remember it. <laughs> or output That's variable. Uh, here's all the string methods. Camel case. Um, these are... JavaScript deals with a lot of HTML. So there's some HTML things here. Well, uh, here's, a, here's a handy one, lowercase. How many times have you wanted to lowercase something, but you don't want to go read the uh, format documentation or <laughs> use an output variable? Right. We have one you probably haven't implemented yet, but you're going to have to add. It came up in one of our calls the other day. It was the sarcasm case. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, that makes. Yeah, well, I'm good. familiar with the sark mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, here, here's a very useful one. Um, there's a warning on it. Um, how many times have you had a string that's a number, but you want to, obviously AutoHotKey does this for us a little bit in that you can give most functions a, a string of a number, but what if you gave it a string that had a zero in front of it? Would it know what to do? Parse int looks at your string and finds the number in it. Right. Now, actually, it is interesting. Um, uh, a different situation came up for me, which I don't know if the library would have done anything on that. But here's the thing. Um, I am actually using Outer Hotkey version 2 most mm -hmm. of the time now because it has a lot of things that, you know, you don't, you see you see what you just said, like, for example, that the format function, you don't want to set up a variable for that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, in Outer Hotkey version 2, you wouldn't need that. Most right. of the parameters that you have as an, as an output variable, you can use them in another way. But what happened was I was getting some information from um, from an API call, and that information was a number. I, I had the number 7,230. But what happened was that that was actually an ID. So that number was an ID, and the method that I was passing that to was expecting a string. So I needed to convert the number into a string. Out of hotkey usually does the opposite. If you have a variable that is a string, and you, you pass a number to it, uh, uh, sorry, if you pass a string that is a number, it is treated as a number. That's what happens usually. But not the other way around. If it is a number, you cannot use it as a string that easily. So how would you do that? <laughs> you see? Yeah. Does, does your, do you have any functions to do the opposite? Like instead of converting a string- I believe there's a two number, string. Right, I, do you have something that converts into a string? Is that something possible? Yeah, uh, let me share it again. Because there are some very weird situations in, you, in which you might need that. Yeah. Oh, there you go, to string. Yeah, there you go. Um, obviously, I didn't do a plain number, but you could put a one there and, and do it. Right. It, it, should, it, it, it would go ahead and convert into just And the same happens with the race. So it flattens the race uh, in, in the same way that it was doing join. Uh, I same? believe so. Okay, so to string and join might do the join. same. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. This is one of the I, things that I, I was saying. Yeah. I don't know if you can see me navigating the code, but I, I can go check on that to string. Here, let me reshare as just the full screen. Oops, that's the wrong one. Um, yeah, so if if it if it receives an object it just calls on join. itself to exactly. join exactly there you go that's a good one <laughs> but yeah working on the library was very nice with this uh modern 
Visual Studio Code, I can just jump to any method. Like I want to join to uh, Chunk. Whoops. I can jump there real quick. And what Chunk does is if you have a really long array, it'll slice it into smaller sections of an array. All right. So this is basically the same as slicing. You just named it Chunk. Um, yes. Well, it's like slice, except slice will return a partial array chunk it it returns the full array just but divided into divided chunk. into smaller pieces all right okay that this is going to be a very nice uh library to look at i actually especially for version one of auto hotkey this would be extremely useful because there's a lot of things in version one that uh, that we're lacking but they they implemented them in version two so there's a few things that might be already implemented that we wouldn't need an, a, a library for it, but that um, in version one, they're not there. So this library for version one specifically would be excellent, yeah, like one thing, very excellent. One thing that always bothers me that for version one, I don't know if they fixed this in version two or not, but if you have an array and you want to find something in there, there's not an easy way in version one, or there's not a built-in way to tell me where the location of this is that thing is right you can get the string at a location but not not the location of that string right um whereas big a and some of my other projects they always have a includes where it'll just tell you does this item exist anywhere in the array yes and index of is a more common um uh, for a lot of the languages what they use to yeah, find exactly. where in the array does it live Strangely, not in AutoHotKey built in uh, version one, but um, no, I think version I'm, I'm out to fix that. that either. <laughs> there you go, and that's the thing. It is it is um, something that you can that you would be helping, you know, make the push to better making the the language a little bit better. Because, for example, again, um, if I I'm going to share my screen real quick. Let me just one minute. Um, so this is from version two. Um, so now, uh, every, most of the things in version two are objects. And so arrays are also objects and they contain some methods that you could use, but you can insert stuff at a, at a location and so on. And you could obviously just use the number of the, the item to get the information for the, the item, but you don't have anything about the index of something. I could tell you if it has something, so I could say, hey, does it have the index number five? Yes, it has it. Yeah, but I cannot say, uh, what is the index of the word has in this array? No, it, you, you cannot do that. So even in version two, you cannot do that. This particular um, um, uh, object or this class that you have created would add something that you cannot do in either version of AutoHotKey yeah. anyways. So, yeah. so I, I think to, in summary, it helps you write less loops. Yes, so, that's basically that's what it's doing. If you're yeah. working with objects, I almost think of it as a requirement. But, right. Um, I definitely see the value of that because for anything, you have to do either a for loop or look for each array index I, and, I guess and do the checks manually. What I was dealing with is in JavaScript, I could just immediately get what I want, filter this array, combine them together, do all this crazy stuff. But then when I go over to auto, auto hockey land, I'm like, well, first I have to loop that array. Right. And I have to no, remember definitely. the output and send the output over here. And then, okay, now let's join the objects. Well, there's no way to join objects in auto hockey. So we'll have to do another loop. And it right. just <laughs> it gets very tiring. <laughs> and that's correct. That's right. And so basically, uh, in auto hotkey, you have to do it yourself, is what yeah. you're saying. Right. But this, this, particular library, what it does is that it fixes that in the sense of just tell me what you want to do and I will do it for you. I think that's a, a great library, actually. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, you know, uh, Elon Musk called out me on DMs and Twitter and said, thank you for everything you do. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that would awesome. Thanks for so um, I had his. I'll put it up again here when I, I distribute this video. But uh, you can get to Chunji's channel um, on that link that I'll I'll have here. And uh, and if you're new to objects, we have a course above me right at the moment 
that you can learn a lot about objects and classes. So thanks everyone.